Information-fueled. Opinion-driven. This is Nashville's Morning News with Dan Mendes. And so, my fellow Americans. We talk news. 806, Nashville's Morning News on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Welcome on in to Nashville's Morning News. I'm Dan. Johnny's over there. Jay is in for Joan. And Jonathan Fahey is joining us on the Newsmaker Hotline. Uh, Jonathan, of course, uh, one of our political analysts, legal analysts as well. Uh, Jonathan, I don't know if you uh, heard our uh, weather forecast uh, here in Nashville. You're in Virginia. But it really wasn't entirely accurate because they said that we're not going to be getting any rain, uh, Jonathan. But I believe that a little bit later on, we're going to have a lot of liberal tears that are going to be raining down across Tennessee is uh, what I'm saying there, Jonathan. Yeah, yeah, I think you might be right. You know, it'll be, it'll be a, you know, if they are, it'll be a fun day to put on MSNBC at least for a little bit. You know, Jonathan, you can just, do, you can just like everyone else on the morning show, they tend to ignore my really bad jokes. That's the third time I've told it. It just, it gets no reaction, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, so let, let's talk a little bit about Kamala Harris. First of all, if you follow me on X, you will find that I have uh, reposted a fake door knock. I don't know if you've saw that you've seen this on social media, but Kamala Harris wrapped up her day last night with a fake door knock. Now, door knock meaning, you know, hi, my name's Kamala. Here's why you should vote for me. Well, the whole thing was staged and, and they caught it. Of course, somebody else was recording and they caught the whole staging of the post. And I think that is really emblematic of of Kamala Harris's entire campaign from the really cringy videos where she's asking Tim Walls to be her running mate, even though there's cameras everywhere and they're trying to make it look like it was a a spur of the moment kind of thing to the rhetoric that she's been spewing out on the campaign trail. Is there anything about Kamala Harris that is actually genuine? No, I don't think so. You know, I think you hit it right on the head. It's like there's nothing authentic and it just shows one her campaign, the people around her have no confidence in her ability to interact with people on a authentic level, and neither does she. And I think it's funny, the fake door knock, but do you remember, I think it was like two months ago, she had to do a retake when she went to go buy Doritos at like a Wawa. Remember yes, that? that she, yes. Yeah, it's like, oh, where are the Doritos, Doug? You know, it's like, oh my gosh, you're kidding me. Like Donald Trump walks into like, the, uh, the Chick-fil-A or when he goes to McDonald's and it's like he can interact with people and she really can. It, it's, it's almost surprising because she's been in politics for a while. You think she'd be able to pull off that, you know, the, a little bit of that small talk because it's frankly pretty easy in those settings because people are going to be somewhat enamored by you because you're, you're famous and stuff. So it, it's, it's pre- pretty telling though, but I think that is her campaign there. It's almost like they want to run, you know, I see these, there's a sign in my neighborhood, you know, we have a lot of hair signs, but one of them is anyone but Trump. And I almost think that's almost the campaign theme for them. They try to make her just, I mean, she is an empty vessel, but they try to almost reemphasize that she's just a non-entity in this campaign. It's just she's anyone but Trump. And it is funny. It's like all they do is put her out there to say these platitudinal things, make, you know, try not to offend anyone, try to, you know, smile and things like that. But there's really nothing there. And you see it anytime she has even, I would call, semi serious interviews, because she never has like a serious, hard hitting interview, uh, say for the, I think the bread, Bear one, which wasn't hard hitting, it was just fair. But but every time she does one of those, she alt- she just completely falls apart. So they just try to do these scripted events, and it's funny how she fails with them, and she yeah. fails with these. You know, anytime she tries a joke, it fails, and it's like what? Yeah, you kind of would love to know, like somebody that knows her well, to say what she actually like. Yeah. You know, in, well, in behind that, the scene, because I have no idea. That's what Joe Rogan wanted to do. I mean, you know this because I I spoke to you about this. Joe Rogan wanted to sit down and have basically a nonpartisan conversation with uh, Kamala Harris. And she, of course, by and large, refused. And the hate listeners will say, no, she didn't refuse. He was being a diva and wouldn't go to her. Right, Don, exactly. Donald Trump. Donald Trump went to Austin. Uh, so did J.D. Vance. And she clearly didn't want to demanding that he go to her wherever she was or would be. 
And uh, he, she only also allotted him one hour. So it's clear that Joe Rogan was going to was not going to meet those demands. And it was incredibly transparent that she had zero interest in having a, a real conversation with a real American. She's surrounding herself with uh, Lady Gaga and Oprah Winfrey and Michael Keaton and Taylor Swift and Beyonce and all of these folks. But she's not really capable of having a conversation with a real American. Uh, Jonathan, how important do you believe the Joe Rogan endorsement was last night? I think it's got to move the needle. You know, I, I mean, I don't know, like, you know, ultimately how much does it matter? I think it matters, you know, enough to probably, you know, move several thousand votes in some of the, you know, in, in these critical states. So I think it's important. I mean, this, you know, I didn't really realize this until probably a year or so ago, how many people are watching him. I guess it's a weekly basis or whenever he does a show. It's really amazing. So if, if, you know, these people watch him, they're loyal to him, they respect what he has to say. So if he's actually endorsing someone, which I, my understanding is he doesn't normally do that or maybe has never done it. So never I think it. it's going to be impactful. Um, and it just shows again, back to your point with Kamala, if she went on the show, he doesn't try to make people look bad. He's not one of those interviewers. So he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have, you know, she would have just had to fail on her own, but it might have also staved off him endorsing Trump if she just went there and was passable. It might have made it, you know, sort of, you know, left him a little bit out of it, but right. maybe, maybe that moved him. I, I don't know. I've just completely speculating, but it, but it could have made a difference for him. A 12 Nashville's morning news on WTN. Jonathan Fahey is joining us. Uh, Jonathan, this is a this is a moment during the Rogan Elon Musk podcast where they're talking about the truth and the media and the Democrats. Deliberately pushing hoaxes that have been debunked thoroughly. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, not we're just... like even Snopes, which is a liberal thing, yeah. says it's bogus. Yeah. Like the fine people f hoax. Uh -huh. Obama just said that on stage. Obama just said that. I was like, what the flying f He doesn't give a f they're That's just flat going out, for flat out. How lie. about the other one where Kamala's campaign used what Trump was saying about protecting women and uh, from illegal immigrants? Thank you. You remember that? The, he, yeah. What he was saying is the, 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 the women like it or not, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. When he was saying that, they were trying to say that he was taking away women's right to choose yes. whether women like it or not. Like that's not what he was saying. Absolutely, he was literally talking about protecting them from dangerous people that are sneaking in through the border. Yes, exactly. Every and it gets media. repeated on the news. Yes, this is what's crazy. They'll talk about it on these news shows. It's quote so, news shows. I, I do. I do like Jonathan when people see what talk radio and talk show hosts have been saying for literally years about the media and the Democrats and the negative uh, reporting and, of course, the, the lies. This is a meme that's going around. I don't know if it's true or not. It sounds like it'd be true. ABC, CBS, NBC, the legacy media's election interference, Harris coverage, 84% positive, Donald Trump's coverage, 89% negative, according to the MRC, the Media Research Centers, given how the media and Hollywood and all of these different entities have been so anti Donald Trump, so pro Kamala Harris, really seems to me manipulating and influencing the election. Are you surprised that this is so close? Wasn't for the media, inter, you know, actually involving themselves and trying to you know, skew the results. This probably wouldn't be that close. That's probably the only reason they're able to keep it close for Harris. And I think the thing that's most striking about the poll, it's not necessarily the negative about Trump, because you could arguably justify negative uh, coverage of him and, and, you know, things he said and, and stuff like that. But the positive coverage of her is astounding because, you know, we've been following this. You've been following this probably for as long as I have yep. uh, politics. There's never been a candidate that I've ever seen on any level that's worse than her. So this idea that, I mean, no one could actually make an affirmative case for her. When you, you see the surrogates go on TV, it's just like, oh, but Trump says this or Trump says that. There's really no serious affirmative case. So that's the thing that's weird about it. It would at least seem a little bit, the media would retain a little credibility if it was like, 
50, 50, comma, negative, positive, and then higher for negative on Trump. But it just shows they're so in the tank. If they could take somebody like this, that, like we, we were talking about, is a complete empty vessel and, and have all these positive stories to say about her, it really just shows where they're coming from. And, you know, the, you know, on Musk's point, and, you know, he, he probably gives the best, most insightful interviews whenever you listen to these because it's authentic and he says things people aren't thinking about. But it's, it's funny that after, what, seven years on the fine people hoax, <laughs> they are still able to say it and know they will not get checked on it, meaning the Democrats, because they're so comfortable with the media carrying water for them. So that's just like that should have been over the day, you know, the first time it was brought up by Democrats and say that's not what he said. And that should have been the end of it. And now we're 2024 going into 2025. And that's still something they're talking about, knowing that it's false or knowing this Dick, uh, the Liz Cheney thing was completely false or completely mischaracterized, yep. you know, with the, you know, and, and that's a, a point that Democrats have made forever that we're anti-war. You know, hey, if, right. if you don't have skin in the game, you know, you have a different perspective, you know, well, which and, is a fair point. And, and the thing is, like, for example, the fine people hoax. So what's frustrating is they have been fact checked on that by Glenn Kessler at The Washington Post. Uh, Snopes has done it as well. I think that there's, I, I think them and, and their followers, by and large, their supporters, the Democrats, they just don't care about the truth. And, and they don't care that some media outlets will actually fact check them. It's just like they're, they're completely, they don't care about the truth. They don't care about being called out. They just don't care. They do it anyway and they do it well, arrogantly. It is, it is stunning that they've been doing the same lies for so long and they can look their voters in the face and nobody seems to care that they're lying to their supporters. Yeah, I think that's fair, but I, I think the media fact-checking on that is not the same level of aggressiveness. It's like obligatory fact-checking. Yeah, yeah, like, they're yeah. going to get on, like, when Biden got on there and said, you know, that you know, it's a bloodbath in day one, all these things are just nonsense. Or like, you know, they're not there, you know, right then saying, wait a second, you've been saying this forever, here's what he actually said. You know, that's what they would do to Donald Trump or do to a Republican. They would have had it teed up, but he knew when he did the debate or whoever prepped him knew, it's like, you're not going to get called out on it. You might after the fact, and who, you know, other than like us and people who are really into this, who's really reading the Glenn Kessler fact checks, right? So they're after the fact that they maintain a little, <laughs> a little credibility, right? Yeah. And, you know, so for the media, but, but the rest of us know that like, okay, I'm glad he called him out on it, but where did where, the people that heard it from like an Obama and then later it's fact checked by Glenn Kessler, you know, what, what, who, what did most people actually hear? What right. Obama said? Uh, let me see real quick. It's, it's 819. So tell me, uh, I've got a couple more questions and I'm rapidly running out of time. So do you have any predictions for tonight? What, what are you thinking? What are you seeing? What are you hearing from your vantage point in the Virginia, greater Washington, D.C. area? Here's what I think in Virginia, you know, Virginia, uh, Trump lost by about 10 points last time to Biden, lost by about five points to Hillary Clinton. We are seeing, and I'm in the D.C. area, I'm, so the, you know, the things are going into D.C. and also Maryland. I'm seeing a lot of Trump ads, and we also know Trump did uh, that rally in Salem, Virginia, which is like southwest Virginia, sort of closer to the Tennessee area. But it just shows you either one they think they have a legitimate shot at winning, or two, this is not a really good use of their resources. And I, I think the, the, the latter, you know, that they think they have a shot at winning. So I, I think watch Virginia tonight, yep. watch New Hampshire tonight, uh, because they're going to, my point is they'll come in early or probably, you know, they'll have, they'll be called. And we know Trump and Harris are campaigning the state. So they're at least lightly contested. They're not like, Hey, how much does he run up the score in Alabama versus, you know, versus right. her and, somewhere else so so i think watch those if they come in of these margins you know virginia's less than five points that's that looks like trump's on a good path if it's sort of closer to that 10 i think it's going to be you know yep. things will look good for kamala yep. and from what i understand i think wisconsin what I, I just saw on fox that i think they said you know 99 percent of their vote came in on you know or, you know, that night on 2020, yeah. although then they're counting Milwaukee and other places after the fact. But, you know, that might be a good harbinger as well, see where that's shaken out, because that's probably going to trail Pennsylvania by a little bit, meaning 
if he somehow tied in Wisconsin, he's probably up a little in Pennsylvania, assuming there's some correlation with all these. It's going to be interesting. Jonathan Fahey, always great to have your analysis on. And I have you did you early vote or are you voting today? Early voted, voted a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, it was they were I, another sign for Trump. Where I live, there's not a lot of Republicans. So that the, there were the Republicans handing out and the poll up. Uh, person told me they've had a lot of positive responses for whatever that's worth. But do you, do you, do, so do you, so you don't live in a Republican area and there's probably very few in, in the DC, Virginia area. So what is that like? Do they know that you're a conservative? I'm, I know they've probably seen you on Maria Bartiromo. You're on there all the time. Yeah, they know. And, um, you know, they, somebody vandalized our Trump sign, you know, I, I think the day it went up. So. Of course. <laughs> so people know we, we've got them, you know, we figure if, if people could fly the Harris signs, they could, you know, we could put our sign up there. So yeah, people know, um, do you get invited to the, do you get invited to the neighborhood parties? Do, do your kids get invited to their kids' are. parties? <laughs> yeah, I think we do, but I don't know. We, we, so, you know, don't, don't go to too many of those, but you know, our, um, there is, I think some, you know, I don't know how much hostility there is, but but certainly everyone expects you to be on one side here, you know, yeah. DC, you know, yeah. uh, which is kind of interesting when they find out you're not, or you have to enter. You know, the, there's the secret society of people that like Trump, and we, you know, yes. walk in the corners at the party. I <laughs> bet, I bet. So. Well, well, Jonathan, thank thank you very much for joining us here on Nashville's Morning News.